Um, this morning, I have the opportunity and privilege to um, share with you something from God's Word that I hope would be beneficial to us. Um, and if we can turn our Bibles to 1 Peter, um, 1 Peter is where we're going to take a look at this morning. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1. Um, 1 Peter, um, the chapter is 1. We want to thank um, all our viewers, all those who are viewing us. We hope and pray that something will be said um, that will be of encouragement to you, that even if you are not a Christian, that you will give your life to Almighty, Almighty God. 1 Peter chapter 1, we'll read verse number 1 to verse number 9. 1 Peter chapter 1, if we can have a few readers, it's Bible class, so um, we can interact and we can talk to each other for a little while. 1 Peter chapter 1, um, if we can read from verse number 1 to verse number 9. Let's see what it says. Anyone? Yeah. To the strangers kept in close fungus, Malachia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Go ahead. Let's according to the form of Bishop Paul. Yeah. Sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be your desire. Someone else, pick it up from there. Someone else. From verse 3, someone else. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, yeah. to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Someone else, pick it up from there. Anyone else from verse number six? In this you greatly rejoice. Yes, sir. Though now for a little while, if need be, mm -hmm. you have been grieved by various trials. Yeah. That the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, yeah. though it is tested right. by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom having not seen you love, Though now you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible yes, sir. and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. All right. As we, as we read um, First Peter, um, I want you to know that First Peter is one of my favorite books in the New Testament. In fact, when we read First Peter, Peter um, write, um, wrote two books, and it's two of the most powerful books in the New Testament. But I want you also to know that Peter has not always been this way. Um, Peter has not always been this kind of man. Now when you read of Peter before, you will get to know quickly that Peter was one who was impetuous and impulsive. Um, you remember in John chapter number 13, um, when Jesus was going to teach the disciples a lesson by watching, washing their feet, that Peter was the one that jumped up and said, Jesus, don't, don't, don't wash don't wash my feet. Leave my feet alone. We should be washing your feet. After Jesus explained the scenario to Peter, Peter said, Jesus, don't wash my feet. Wash my whole body. Um, that, that's the kind of guy Peter was. You read in Matthew chapter number 17 when they walk up to the Mount of Transfiguration and Jesus was transformed before them and Moses and Elijah appeared to them that the Bible says Peter not knowing what to say just burst out and said, Lord, it is good for us to build three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. Peter was that kind of individual. And then we still read in Matthew chapter number 26 when Jesus gave his passion prediction, what is known as his suffering that is going to come um, when he was going to die on the cross of Calvary, Peter was the one that said, Jesus, no one is going to harm you and even if I have to die with you, so be it. I will not deny you. Then we read later on that Peter denied Jesus Christ, that Peter was a rash individual. Peter loved to talk. And, and that's some of us, if we are honest, we just love to talk. And that's the kind of individual Peter was. But when you read the book of First and Second Peter, you get to see a whole different man. You see a different individual. You see one who has graduated. You see one who has grown. You see one who has developed and one who has matured. And now Peter, as he writes to these believers, Peter is writing to 
them to encourage the believers who are scattered in the ancient world not to lose hope. And if you want a title um, for our message or class this morning is Do Not Lose Hope. Peter is writing to the brethren to encourage them not to to lose hope. I want you to know that the book of First Peter, the theme of the book of First Peter is suffering. That every chapter you read, you will find that there is something that deals with suffering. And all Peter is trying to get the brethren to do is to hold on to God and not lose hope. He wants them to know that difficulties will come, trials will come, hardships will come, but he doesn't want them Peter doesn't want them to lose, to lose any hope in Almighty God. It's interesting that Peter is the one who is encouraging the brethren because Peter is one who has experienced punishment and Peter is one who has experienced hardship in his life. When you read in the book of Acts, you get to realize that Peter was beaten, Peter was thrown into prison, Peter was punished, Peter understood what it is like to be threatened and to face persecution. And so now Peter is writing to the brethren and Peter is encouraging the brethren to hold on to Almighty God. Don't, don't lose hope. Don't give up on Almighty God, but hold on to his hands. But Peter says some things in verse number one to verse number nine that I want us to highlight this morning that I hope will be beneficial to every one of us. That I hope we will be able to um, see it in the text and apply it into our lives as we walk our Christian walk. I'm holding on to Almighty God's hand. Someone, if we can read verse number one, let's see if we can get something from verse number one. Watch what Peter says in verse number one. Uh, verse number one, Peter says this. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who reside as aliens. To those who reside as aliens. No, 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 don't miss this. Peter, an apostle of Christ, to those who reside as aliens. Peter, an apostle of Christ, to those who reside as aliens. The first thing um, that we can highlight in the text is the fact that Peter um, calls the brethren aliens, that Peter calls the brethren pilgrims, that Peter calls the brethren strangers, that Peter calls the brethren exiles. Peter said, you are aliens. And the first thing we want to highlight is remembrance. Peter wants them to remember who they are. Uh, but don't miss this. Peter wants them to remember who they are. Now, this is not the first time you would realize in the book of Peter that Peter calls the brethren aliens. If someone jumped down to chapter 1 and verse number 17. Chapter 1 and verse number 17. Watch Peter as he writes to the brethren. Watch what he says. Chapter 1 and verse number 17. Uh huh. Yeah. Judged accord, according to every man's will. Past the time of your sojourning here in fear. He, he said, listen, listen. If you call on Almighty God as Father and he, he judges justly and he judges according to everyone's work, pass your time, another version would say, if they read the King James Version, they would say, as strangers on this earth, as pilgrims on this earth. If you jump to chapter number 2, if you jump to chapter number 2 and verse number 11, watch Peter again. Um, chapter 2 and verse number 11. Watch Peter. That's you don't we don't have to go anymore. That's all we need. Peter said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers. And P Peter said, Listen, I want you all to know that you are strangers on this earth. You are aliens. You are not from this world. You may be living in this world, but you are not from this from this world brethren the idea of a pilgrim is someone who re resides um, temporary um, in a particular place the idea of a pilgrim is someone who resides temporary in a particular place and peter said you guys are just passing through you guys are just going through and this earth is not going to last forever and you are just passing through. In fact, in Philippians, Paul write to the brethren and told them that your citizenship is in heaven, that you are citizens of heaven. You don't belong to this earth. From the time you became a Christian, your nature has changed and now your father has changed and your citizenship has changed. You are now citizens of heaven heaven and pilgrims ought to live with this awareness in their mind this awareness that they are just 
passing through. They ought to live with this awareness of where their true home really is. Brethren, if we are honest this morning, there are times in our lives when we forget that we are pilgrims. You, you, you don't all don't have to say, I know I'm right. There are times in our lives when we forget that we are aliens. When we forget that we are just strangers that is passing through. We forget that we are just here for a temporary time. And I want you to know also that there was a time in Christianity when being a pilgrim used to be a major theme and it used to be on top of our minds. That we all understood and know that we are just here for a short time. But as time progressed and in fact in this society and generation that we live in now, everyone is seeking to build their homes on this earth and they have forgotten about eternity. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we have forgotten about eternity. We have forgotten that we are not going to remain here forever. And we have allowed the world to push eternity out of our minds and place the eternal, the, the earthly things on the forefront of our minds. And, and I love the way Peter begins because as he begins his letter, he immediately calls them alien and strangers because he doesn't want them to miss the fact of who they are. Brethren, if we are aliens and strangers, it means that we ought not to seek to pursue all the earthly goals that we are seeking and forget about our heavenly goals. Now, I know some of you are thinking that, all right, um, so are you saying that I ought not to get an education? Are you saying that I ought not to be ambitious? That's not what I'm saying. But the problem with such is that oftentimes, we have allowed our earthly pursuits to become our priority. Y'all are not with me this morning. You, you can't talk back to me. We, we have allowed our earthly pursuits to become our priority. And we have forgotten that our sole purpose is to bring glory to God and to bring many sons to glory. Yeah, yeah, we have forgotten our purpose. And we have allowed our earthly pursuits to push eternity out of our minds. And you know, you know what we start doing? We have started to build permanent houses in a temporary place. That, that, that we have started to build permanent houses in a temporary place. We are seeking to build permanent lives in a place that won't last forever. That we want to build permanent houses where tents belong. Can, can I tell you this? That when the children of Israel were passing through the wilderness, that God didn't want them to build a permanent house to worship him, but God wanted them to build tents because they can pack up and move to when, when he wants them to move. And, and that's the same thing God wants us to do. God don't want us to build houses and build lives on this earth, but God wants us to have tents so that we can put it down here and when it's time to move, we are ready to move. But the problem is, brethren, we have allowed this world to confine us to its earthly things and now we are seeking the earthly things more than we are seeking the heavenly things. That our minds are more occupied with the things of this earth rather than the things that God wants us to be on the top of our minds. But I have some news for you this morning. That all of the earthly things that we are pursuing, they are not prerequisites set by God. That God never said that you have to have a big house and a few cars, you know, to get into heaven. God never set these earthly goals as priority and prerequisites. In fact, when we read in Matthew chapter number 6 and verse number 33, you all know that by heart, the Bible says what? Seek ye first the, the kingdom of God. He said, listen, you ought to seek God's kingdom first. That what should be on the top of your mind is the kingdom of God. How many times we sit as brethren and we want to further the kingdom of God? I know we sit down many times and we think of furthering ourselves. We want to get this, we want to achieve this, we want to have, and ain't nothing wrong with that once you have the kingdom as priority. But most times, brethren, if we are honest with ourselves, 
We allow the world and its earthly pursuits to take priority over the things of God. But as Peter begins his writing, Peter said, you are aliens, you are exiles, you, you, you don't belong here and you need to keep and live with this awareness in mind. It, 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 can, can I tell you, if you remember you are pilgrims, then you would not forget your purpose. If you remember you are pilgrims, you will not forget your purpose. But from the time you forget you are pilgrims, you automatically forget your purpose. If we remember, brethren, that we are just passing through, we will do all that we can to see if we can win souls and do as much as we can for Almighty God before we leave this earth. And as one brother said, we will make sure and do our part before we depart. That's right. yes, sir. But from the time you forget who you are, you find that we automatically forget our purpose. That we ought not, brethren, to allow our homes to be this earth. For we know there is a time coming where God will destroy this earth. There is a time coming when all of this would vanish away. And as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Paul said, when this earthly tabernacle is fallen, that we know that we have a heavenly home with Almighty God. That we ought to spend our time on this earth building our home in heaven. So after we leave this earth, we are sure that we will be in the presence of God for eternity. So Peter writes to the brethren and Peter said, listen, the first thing I want you to know is that you are exiles. You are strangers. Don't let that slip your mind. I want you to keep that on the top of your mind that you are exiles. You are individuals just passing through. But as Peter continues to go down, let's see what Peter says. Someone, we are still in verse, we are first Peter. Um, Peter says what? Um, not only that you are exiles and strangers, and then Peter calls a few places. He calls Cappadocia, he calls Bithynia, he calls what? Asia. And don't misunderstand this. These are the nations that were present on the day of, uh, uh, the day of Pentecost. You remember in Pentecost when Peter stood up and preached the first gospel message? And if you read Acts chapter 2 and verse number 9, you would see the same nations right there. And so Peter says, listen, I'm writing to these brethren, but I want them to know that they are Strangers, but Adrian, can you continue to read for us? Um, let's see what it says. Verse number two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, uh -huh. in sanctification of the Spirit, yeah. for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Read. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Yeah, keep reading. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord be Jesus the God Christ. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who according to his abundant mercy. Who according to his abundant mercy. Has begotten us again. Has begotten us again. To a living hope. To a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ the from the dead. the resurrection of Jesus Christ. From the dead. From the dead. Keep reading. To an inheritance to incorruptible. An inheritance in no, 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 no. L listen, brethren. Peter doesn't just remind the brethren of who they are, but Peter also reminds the brethren of what they have. Yes. Y'all not with me this morning. Peter reminds them first off of who they are. Peter said, you are strangers. But then as we read in the book of Peter, Peter goes down to tell them what they have. But before we get to what they have, I just love verse number three. Verse number three, Peter starts talking about our living hope. And watch how Peter starts off. Peter said, Blessed be the Lord. Brother Adrian, read it for us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. P Peter said, Blessed be the Lord and God of our Father, Jesus Christ. Peter uses the word bless, and the word bless there is not the same word that is used in Matthew chapter number five. We know the Beatitudes and you see blessed is this man and blessed is this one. The word there is used, happy is the one. But the word Peter uses in this text is a word that comes from the Greek word eulogetos, which actually means eulogy, to speak well of. And so watch what happens. In verse number 2, and verse number 1 and verse number 2, what Peter does is that he tells us of our salvation. Peter tells us of our salvation. And then Peter said, bless be God. Don't, don't, don't miss this. Peter talks about our salvation. And then Peter said, bless be God. In other words, when Peter contemplates how great our salvation is, 
and what God did to make our salvation, Peter said, God, I have no other choice than to speak well and praise you. I have no other choice than to just be grateful to you. I have no other choice than to just bless you. Brethren, if we are honest this morning, if we truly sit down and think about what God has done and the sacrifice God has made just to make it possible for us to be in his kingdom, we would have no other choice than to praise God. We would have no other choice than to give God the glory. We would have no other choice than to lift up God's name because we have come to realize that what God did, no one else could do. If we could have done it for ourselves, we would have did it already. But we realize that the sacrifice and the salvation that God provided, no one else could provide it. And so Peter said, God, I'm just going to bless you and speak well of you because when I think of your salvation that you've provided for us, I'm grateful. But Peter then said that we are born again unto a living, That's right. a living hope. You read in the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs tells us that the reward of the righteous or the hope of the righteous is great reward. But the expectation of the wicked is destruction. That in other words, the wicked have nothing to hope for. The wicked are just living, waiting for... Could you imagine that you are waiting just to be destroyed? But those of us who are believers... Peter said that you have a living hope. That when you read Ephesians chapter 2 and around verse number 9 and 10, the Bible says that we are excluded from God. We are not in the commonwealth. We were without hope. But now when, we book, when Peter writes, Peter says that we have a living, a living hope. When Peter talks about our living hope, brethren, Peter is talking about the fact that we can hope in the promises or we can expect what God has promised. Why? Because Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead and like Jesus was resurrected from the dead, we can be sure that what God has promised, he will produce. That our hope is living because Christ is living. And because Christ is alive and living, we can hope in Almighty, in Almighty God. Peter said that we have a living a living home. But you keep reading for us. To an inheritance incorruptible. No, the, the, this, this is the thing. You were born again to an inheritance. You were born again to an inheritance. Peter doesn't, didn't just want to bring a remembrance to the brethren mind, but Peter wanted also to talk about the inheritance. Who they are and what they have. Watch what Peter says. That you were born again to an inheritance. Which means that the prerequisite for the inheritance is to be born again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Y'all are still with me, right? Yeah. Yep. That, 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 that the prerequisite for the inheritance is to be born again. So no one that is not born again will receive the inheritance. No one that has not given their life to Almighty God will receive the inheritance. That this inheritance only belongs to the folks that has given their life over to Almighty God. That you must be born again to receive the inheritance. And watch how Peter tries to describe the inheritance. And I have to say try because Peter gives us a very vague description of the blessings of God. Watch Peter. Incorruptible and undefiled. Incorruptible means that it cannot decay. Peter said it's undefiled. It means it's not touched by pollution. Watch this. And that does not fade it away. It does not fade away. It does not fade away. Really, literally comes from a Greek word which means does not lose its glory. And what Peter is saying is that when we look at this life, there are beautiful things that over time loses its glory. That, that sometimes we buy something and it's looking all brand new and shiny and it's looking beautiful now, but give it a few years, you will find that its, its glory, its glory is diminishing. But Peter said, can I tell you the difference with your earthly treasures and the heavenly treasure? Peter said, your heavenly inheritance does not lose its glory. Yeah, that's right. It means that it, it remains beautiful. 
It remains splendor. It remains glorious. And that's the blessings that we have. That's the inheritance that God gave us. That's the promise that God has made to the believers. Now, brethren, you see, while we live on this earth, we oftentimes would seek to pursue the things that we consider to be valuable on this earth. You don't have to lie, we are in church this morning. <laughs> we, we, we seek to pursue the stuff that we think is valuable. But what Peter is doing is contrasting the earth with the heaven. And he's saying, take a look at the things on earth and compare it to the beauty of heaven and you will quickly realize that the things on earth cannot compare to the... Oh, you all know with me. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 18. You can get there while I tell you what it says. The Bible says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that is going to be revealed. Let's turn there because I want to make sure that it's still in the Bible. Romans chapter 8 and verse number 18. Let's see what it says. For I consider, that For I consider or I reckon that the sufferings of this present life are not worthy to be compared are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed with the us. glory that it shall be revealed peter said listen in fact paul is writing and the word reckoned or consider comes from the greek word which means to calculate paul said listen i have calculated this yeah paul said i have calculated this and when i've calculated i've concluded that the things that i'm going through now is nothing compared to what God is going to give to me at the end time. That's right. It's nothing compared to the glory that is going to be revealed unto us. So when Paul writes about this glory that is going to be revealed unto us, when Peter writes about it, they are trying to describe to us how great of an inheritance we have. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and around verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and around verse number 17 and 18. Let's see what it says. For light affliction. For, no, no, I always had some trouble with this because <laughs> Paul was one of the individuals who faced the most troubles and trials in his life. <laughs> and I don't know how Paul had the audacity to call this light affliction. Yo, yo, yo. That <laughs> Paul faced everything. That we can go. Paul said, I was hungry, I was shipwrecked, I was beaten, I was in prison. You just name it. And Paul said, This is light affliction. But watch why Paul calls it light affliction. Which is but for a moment. Paul said, It is but for a moment because which this? Is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Paul said that the glory we're going to receive is weighty. That the glory we're going to receive has some weight on it. You know, sometimes when we receive gifts, we like to feel a little weight in the gift so we would know, well, we lift it and make sure that... It, and, and, and Paul writes, and Paul says, listen, that the, 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 the glory that God is going to give you is full of weight. It is far greater than all you... It is going to exceed your expectation. Brethren, I'm going to tell you this. That when we get to heaven, there are a lot of benefits... In heaven but the real beauty of heaven is Almighty God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.